Okay, this time I'm gonna start from scratch. I'm gonna open my Anaconda prompt. I'm gonna create a new environment. I'll name it chromadb-env. All right, environment created. Let me activate the environment. Now let me install Python. I'm used to 3.10. I find that Chroma doesn't work with the latest version, so I'm going to stick with 3.10. Should be conda install. Okay, uh, our environment is good to go. Let me open Visual Studio Code. I'm going to use the same project folder as my last video, but I'll create a new file. I'll call it multi-modal. Make it a Jupyter file, Jupyter notebook. Select my Python environment. Here's the one that I just created. Let's get Chroma DB installed. Run this. I put the dash dash upgrade option on there in case you already have Chroma DB installed. Okay. Looks good. Clear this. New code block. I'm going to import Chroma DB, also the built in multimodal embedding function, and also this image loader. It's a helper package for loading images. Okay. Run that, new code block. All right, I'm gonna create my vector database. I'll give it a path of my vector DB. So it's gonna create a new folder. You'll notice a new folder here. Let's run this. There you go. So first time I run it, it's going to create a SQLite database inside this folder. If you already have it and you run this, it will just get what's already there. Now let's create the collection. The collection is basically the vector database. So unfortunately, we cannot reuse the one that we created last time because we're changing the embedding function. Okay, let me create, create an instance of the image loader. This guy's right here. I'll create an instance of the embedding function, passing it in here. And I'll call the uh, database multimodal DB. Let's run it. All right, what's the error? Okay, it's telling me I need to install this pillow package. It's for handling images. I'll get rid of this. All right, let's install that. Okay, it's installed. Let's do this again. Another error. I'll just follow what it says. Okay, let's do this again. It's downloading the open clip embedding model onto my computer. All right, that's good. Just in case you want to know where this model goes, go into your user folder. That's your C users, your username. Under dot cache, under hugging face, looks like this is the model that just got downloaded. Here we go. Open clip PyTorch model dot bin. That's this guy right here. So if you ever want to get rid of it, uh, this is where it is. Just go ahead and get rid of everything in the cache folder. Okay, new code block. Now that we have our database, let's add some stuff to it. I have some images that I already downloaded. I got a picture of a lion and a picture of a tiger. Get rid of this. I'm going to use my multi-modal db collection called the add function. 
I can actually add the tiger and the lion at the same time. The parameters that I need to pass in are IDs. ID is something that we have to basically generate ourselves and manage ourselves. And it's a string. So I'm just going to use zero and one. The next parameter is a URI. I would need to pass in the path. I'll use relative path to my lion. You can also use uh, absolute path. ID zero corresponds to my lion and ID one corresponds to my tiger. Note that Chroma DB doesn't actually store the image data in the vector database. All it stores is the embedding. By running the add function, it will use the image loader package to load the lion and tiger images. And it will use the embedding function to convert the image into embeddings. Now, if I move the location of these files, that's going to break the link between the vector database and the physical images. Now let's run this. It is URIs. Okay. Let me do a count. Two records. That's good. New code block. Now I'm going to query the vector database using the query function. The parameter that I need to pass in is query text. I'll just do tiger first. Two more parameters that I need is the number of results that I want to get back. What elements do I want to get back? Um, let me run this and we can see. Okay. I'm getting a warning here because I'm asking for five results, even though there's only two items in the database. That is okay. So what it returned from the query is actually a dictionary of a two dimensional array. Uh, it's a little bit hard to read. So let me bring in a function to uh, show the results. Let me just add the function up here. It's just a helper function that I put together to print the results. It's pretty straightforward. It's just looping through the results. And it's also using a graphing library in order to show the image. Let me go up here. All right, I need to install this. Okay, install is good. Import again. Import is good. Run this one so the function is defined. Let me come down here, call my function. Okay, let me do the query again. Actually, let me take this one out. Pass this one in. I'll also pass it to my print function. That's better. So results for querying tiger, the first result or the best result that comes back is the tiger, of course. And we can see the distance that it's calculated. Going down, the second image that comes back is the lion. We can tell the difference between the distance. The word tiger it matches up with the image tiger much closer than, than the lion. Now, if I, if I reverse that, I'm expecting the results to reverse. Yep, query results for lion. Lion comes first, tiger comes second. So the data is actually using the image loader package to load the physical file. If I go and change the name of lion, it shouldn't be able to find lion. See, it's going to say no such file images slash lion dot JPEG. So it's important to keep these files in tag. If you move them or rename them, you're going to have to update the factor database. Okay, it's back to normal. All right, so we see basically how the uh, multimodal factor database works. Now let's try to do something more useful. So here I got some images of some dishes from a restaurant. The name of this dish is just assorted vegetables. 
it doesn't say what vegetables there are in here. The idea is if I load this image into the factory database, I can search for broccoli. It would actually find this dish for me. All right, let's try that out. Let me add another code block. Let me copy this in. Okay, so here are my three images and I'm just using the uh, the item number as the ID. I have some uh, metadata that I added, the item ID, uh, the item name. So as mentioned, the dish that has the broccoli doesn't mention broccoli at all in its name. Now, let me run this. Okay, check my count. Now I got five items in the database. Okay, let me search for broccoli. There we go. It actually finds broccoli here. It also returns other dishes. Uh, let me see if it can find baby corn. Uh, it does. What about carrot? Cool. All right. It finds the carrot here, finds the carrot here. No carrots in any of these three, but I guess I'm expecting this dish to go before that, but um, it's hard to say. Now, one problem you can see is that if I have different categories of pictures, I'm going to get results like this, where I'm searching for carrots and I'm seeing a tiger, which is not very intelligent, right? But the uh, factor database will return as, as many results as is specified. And there's no way for us to do a cutoff based on uh, distance or something. There's no way for me to determine what distance to cut off. If I have a scenario like this, I'm going to need to add a category or something. So let me just add it to here. I'll say image category food. Okay. Instead of add, I'm going to have to do an update. Run it. I need to do the same thing. I'll add a metadata. And it needs to be a tuple. Okay, also needs to be an update. Ah, since there are two items, of course I need two metadata. Okay. Now down here in the query, I need to add a where the name of the metadata, the where keyword applies to the metadata. And then my second parameter is going to be my uh, keyword match. It should not return anything with a category that's not food. Let's run it. Okay. Good, good, good. All right. Another option is we can do the opposite and the opposite involves making another tuple. And then we have to pass in dollar sign NE as not as in not equal to. I'll say image category not equal to food. You see, even though we're searching for carrot, it's going to just return any image matching this criteria. So we can change it back to equal just by doing this. I think it's EQ. So this is the same as removing, removing everything like this. All right, I'm going to stop here today. Let me know if you have any questions or if there's any topics you're interested in.